Hello everybody. I know it's Wednesday. And I decided to vlog anyway. Cause rules are made up. <laughs> I made up the rules so I can change them whenever I like. And right now my screen door is open, so Loki's kind of in and out, which is unfortunate because I was gonna try to tell his story today. And I wanted him to come over and be visible. But you know, such as sorry, I moved my computer. Okay, that's better. Oh excuse me. Oh, I'm so sorry. If I was any kind of real vlogger, I'd edit that out, but I'm not, so I'm going to continue. <clears throat> right. So I was usually going to post, um, film and post something on Saturday, but unfortunately Saturday just didn't work to my advantage. So I ended up just nixing recording for the whole day and moving on with life. So I did. And then, mm, I'm having a very yawny Wednesday apparently. So. Instead, today I will tell Loki's story because everybody wants to hear a story about a cat. Everybody loves cats. Right, so we begin in 2013. My mom and I had, we were living together in a small town and um, I was still in college and the two cats that we had at the time weren't yet uh, neutered. So, despite being very probably litter mates, aka siblings, they do what animals do best and reproduced. <laughs> um, unfortunately, Luna, the girl cat, she's all black. She has a face kind of like a panther, like her nose kind of curves out like a panther's does. Oh, hi, baby. Loki's back. He may come up and say hello. But unfortunately, Luna could not um, sustain the kittens she produced, which was very unfortunate. They were very cute. I mean, of course, they were kittens. But uh, unfortunately, they both passed. Um, we tried to take care of them ourselves, so we have had some kitten rearing stuff on hand, you know, like the bottles, the kit milk, the, um, I think we had a heating pad. Uh, anyway, so I just thought it was almost like a twist of fate that we had all of this on hand. Um, and that was at spring break. I think we didn't... I think we ended up getting rid of the milk because we didn't think we'd need it, but we still had the rest of the supplies. Um, just kind of hanging around because like, what do you do with all that after the tragedy? So, you know, we had all that. That was the spring break. I went back to college because I was living on campus. Um, and then I came back for the end of the year. I in June, yeah, it would be mid to late June when um, someone con you know, asked my mom, was just like, hey, can you take in a kitten? And mom was just like, sure. Big Zoom. Um, oh, and he's back. He's got the zoomies. <laughs> Oh, he's got the zoomies. <laughs> Sorry, that was distracting. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, this person asked us if we could take in the kitten. We took in the kitten. You know, just wee tiny thing. He was the size of my palm. Um, which is pretty big because I'm just a pretty big person, but... You know, I could fit the poor little scrap of fur in my hand. It was... The hair in my hand doesn't look so huge. It was, he was so small. So small. But, uh, 
I'll admit I didn't have a whole lot of faith or hope in my heart that he would survive. He was about two and a half weeks old. Um, I managed to convince my mom to take him to the vet. So we were able to figure out his age. Uh, that's fetus. That was the, uh, <sighs> he would have been a father <laughs> anyway. So, um, yeah, we had this, you know, two, two and a half old week kitten, week old kitten. And, um, despite my pessimism, he lived and he took the bottle. My, uh, one of my sisters was the first one to get him to actually latch and lean on the bottle. Uh, we learned, you know, what you have to do to help a kitten of that age survive which included, um, you know, I was gonna, yeah, I'll talk about it anyway. I don't care if I'm gross. I'm not even monetized. Uh, <laughs> uh, I do have a few watchers. I think I have a couple of people watching. Um, anyway, so when they're that little, they won't move their bowels on their own. Uh, you have to take a warm, damp washcloth and gently, you know, pat the area, well, stroke the area until they poop. Cause that's, that's what the mother does. The, the, the mama cat, the mom, um, you know, when they're grooming them, they groom them all over and that includes their butt. So, and that's what stimulates them to poop. So we had to make sure that he could do that until he learned how to do it by himself. Um, but yeah, we had him for a few weeks. I, I was the main caretaker because I was home from college and I, <laughs> and then as now, um, did not have a conventional sleeping schedule. So I was awake in the night and he needed feeding like every two to three hours. Um, so yeah, it fell on me. And then when I was asleep, you know, my mom or another one of my sisters would do it. Um, only one of my sisters lived with us at the time. The other one was moved out. Um, that's not as important. Anyway, he was taken care of. Um, I had, I procrastinated naming him for a long time because I wanted him to get a little older and I'd see more of his personality especially because we all just kind of defaulted to this is Emma's cats now. Um, and then my sister named him in my absence, which yeah, it turned out to be a very accurate name, like a very good name for him, but I'm just still low key and annoyed, <laughs> low key, <laughs> um, still a bit annoyed because you know, that's my cat. I didn't get to name my own damn cat. <sighs> That's just procrastination. If you don't do it, someone else is going to do it. And then you have to live with the result. So now we have Loki. Uh, I think she named him specifically after the Marvel character, which I don't disagree with. I do like him, especially Tom Hiddleston. <laughs> but, uh, <coughs> and so I had my little Loki and he and I moved out. And we had to hop around a few places. We were separated for a few months. Uh, he was in good hands. He was with one of my sisters and my best friend. And we got to be reunited again. Um, unfortunately, he's had some... I noticed it when we were first moved out from my mom's house or apartment into our first the first place I was ever technically um, on my own, I guess. I'll call it on my own. Um, but I noticed it then he, depending on what kind of litter I got him, he would kind of chew on himself a little bit. He, at that time, he kind of targeted the backs of his back legs and his actual back, like here, like all this and back here he kind of chewed up um that sorted him out um he also had fleas and we sorted that out 
<coughs> and he grew up to be the whoa hi Phoebus. Um, but um, back then I kind of thought everything was fine. You know that he just oh you know don't get that type of litter again. But I um. And I haven't, you know, I've never gone back to, I've just pretty much been to using Arm and Hammer since, and that's, he hasn't tried to chew his back or legs to bits again. But it seemed that I should have taken that as a sign that he either had anxiety or some kind of weird allergy. I think at the time I thought it was just an allergy and I didn't, you know, worry about it too much because I thought it was just the litter. Um, since then, I don't, I still don't know what the issue is or was, but, uh, after I came back from our months apart, he developed this habit of attacking the tip of his tail. Like for some reason, when he got really, you know, cranked up, you know, all hyped up and zoomy he would just, I guess, get overexcited and turn on his tail and attack the tip and bite it till it bled. And because it's the very end of his tail, it was really kind of hard to bandage it, take care of it. Um, and you know, a lot of times we just kind of hide it, you know, out of sight, out of mind, he wouldn't fuss it. Uh, when he got too overexcited, you just kind of like get him to lay down, half cover him with a blanket. He'd settle down, everything would be fine. And then sometimes he'd go for weeks without fussing his tail. But, you know, for the, it was pretty much, you know, he was pretty much fine for a few years. Um, he and I moved out. Well, we moved around a bit, but, um, we kind of ended our every year moving streak when we moved to an apartment in uh, Reading. Yeah, I'll say it. Um, we lived in Reading for a little while because uh, we don't live there anymore. Um, I don't feel like that's divulging too much personal information because it's somewhere I lived and somewhere I left. <clears throat> so we lived in Reading for four years. And it was really good, completely ruined me for living with other people, if I'm completely honest. It was just he and I in a studio apartment and we were really happy. But I, he was happy, I was happy. Well, I was also stressed and overworked and underpaid, but such is. Um, but this isn't my story, this is his story. Uh, um, so we were happy living there. Um, unfortunately though, he, towards the end of it, 2019, uh, so he was six years old and for some reason the tail thing just got real bad and, you know, he kept attacking it and attacking it. And one day, um, I was waiting, you know, uh, I had an evening shift at one of my jobs and he bit his tail up and I was just like, uh, you know, I'm just dealing with it. But the thing is it kept bleeding. Like it wouldn't stop. <laughs> Sorry, Phoebus just was grooming his toes and he stopped and he had the, the blep. Um, anyway. So, you know, I, of course, was very concerned and alarmed because, you know, my cat's gone crazy and he won't stop bleeding. So I decided, you know, we're going to go to a vet. You know, I, I could not afford it at that time, but I was just like, shit, we got to go. We got to go. Um, so at first I thought I would try to walk to the vet because I did not have a car. I don't know how to drive. I took the bus everywhere and I didn't think I, I didn't think I was allowed to take the cat on the bus. Um, 
I think I would have tried it if I had a smaller carrier, but I had a massive carrier. Um, I still do. I have a massive carrier for my cat. Um, we're probably going to put one of the other cats in it if and or when we move out of where we are now. Um, cause Loki, he's 10 pounds, but he's not like, he doesn't necessarily need a massive carrier. He, he can fit in a normal size carrier. It's just my grandma gave it to me <clears throat> and that's what I had. Uh, he travels fine in cars anyway. I can just put him on his, uh, I have him leash and harness trained. Uh, anyway, that's off topic, uh, right now. So, you know, I tried to walk. I managed to get over to West Reading before I just kind of stopped and was like, oh my God, why don't I just call an Uber? And it was just, <laughs> oh, I felt like an idiot. I felt like a big idiot. Um, well, no, I, I think back in my apartment, I tried to get the Uber app. But I downloaded the wrong one. I actually downloaded the one that's for drivers. And I could, when I downloaded the proper Uber app, I had put in too much information that they thought I was a driver. So I could not use the, the customer Uber app. And it was just kind of, like I said, I was panicking hard that day. I was in a huge... I just remember I pretty much cried for six hours straight that day because I was so stressed out and, you know, anxious and freaking out because like, oh, that was 2019. Yeah. Um, was I take? I think I was taking anxiety medicine at that time, but even so, this was just a very stressful event for me. <clears throat> anyway, um. I obviously I had already called into work going, oh, I, can't, I can't come in. I can't do. But, um, and that was someone I had actually never talked to before. So she just, you know, first met me via me calling in, sobbing about how I can't come in because I have to take my cat to the vet. So, you know, that was a fantastic first impression. Thankfully, I quit that job pretty quickly after that. <laughs> Oh, anyway, so we, we made it to West Reading before I remembered that Lyft exists, you know, kind of like a knockoff Uber. So I managed to re re regain enough composure to it, um, contact or download the app, get a Lyft, and then take that to the nearest vet's office and then of course, because, you know, vets being what they are, that, uh, they, they wouldn't just take them in, you know, they had to make an appointment and be a customer and stuff. So, but thankfully they pointed me out to the, uh, emergency vet over in, um, not Shippensburg, uh, it's another kind of town. Um, um, and basically it's just another part of Reading because Reading's this big, great big sprawl and they have different names for different parts. Um, and I forget a lot of them now, but oh, stop it. Okay. Excuse me a moment. Sorry about that. Loki was. Loki and one of the other cats were having issues. Not fighting, it's just Loki wants to play with the other cat, Whiskey, and Whiskey doesn't want to play with Loki, and it's just... <sighs> anyway. So, I got a lift over to the emergency vet in part of the outer sprawl of Reading. Um, and... <laughs> I, I'm, I'm laughing now, but at the time I was just kind of, you know, freaking out. Um, <clears throat> but <laughs> we got there, we got him checked in and the vet was checking for fleas, you know, using the flea comb at the base of his tail. And of course, you know, the tail's what got Loki all in a tizzy anyway. There is the boy. 
and Loki whipped around and bit the vet, <laughs> which is bad. Uh, oh, for all intents and purposes, uh, that's that's bad. I shouldn't be laughing. Um, I apologized a lot. Um, but <laughs> oh, my little asshole cat just went ahead and bit the vet. Um, so you know, eventually they they. You know, we talked over the options and uh, basically it just rolled down to they decided to amputate his tail. So, you know, I, I left him there for several hours. I went home. Uh, I called my dad to ask if he could help me pick up my cat because it would be at like, oh my God, it was like three in the morning, I think, when I was supposed to go pick him up. Where is he? I, I swear I just saw him go under my chair. Oh, there he is. <clears throat> anyway, but yeah, you know, I had to go pick him up about three in the morning and my dad worked second shift at the time. So I thought, you know, I'd ask him if after he got off work, he would come get, get me in the cat. And <laughs> absolutely fabulous. He played ball. He came, he, he came through a uh, good man. I still really appreciate that my, he did that. Um, so we went and picked him up. I was still just kind of freaking out. Um, I had calmed down a lot. I had taken a nap, but I was just, oh, I just, I was strung out. I ended up texting with one of my coworkers. Uh, I remember around eight o'clock that night, uh, I was waiting for a bus to go home because because I didn't have Loki in the car. I didn't feel obligated to, uh, call a lift or anything so I just walked to the nearest bus stop and got a bus and took the bus home oh and it was terrible because this was all in January thankfully I was wearing a black coat so and it's a pretty big coat so it covered me down to like top of my thigh which is good because like my shirt and jeans were kind of covered in blood so you know that would have been a great look to show up to the bus stop covered in blood crying oh yeah but um yeah we went and got Loki we came home uh I remember he he got out of the carrier you know his <laughs> his poor rear end all naked you know, they, they shaved so much of his butt um He's hiding now. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, he's got this naked cat butt and an absolute satellite dish for a cone to make sure he didn't lick the stitches or anything. And I was just, oh man, I was so strung out. I just remember I was not strung out, wrung out. Like I literally felt like a rag that had just been twisted dry. It was terrible. I, um, you know, I had been texting my coworker and been like, I don't know if I can come in tomorrow. I just, I've got nothing. I've got nothing, man. And I really didn't. I had nothing. I was just, and it, it was okay. They, they understood They they, I had been with those co-workers long enough for them to understand that that cat is basically my child. You know, I had him since he was two weeks old. We've been together for years. And then there was those four years where it was just the two of us. You know, he was, he is my far baby. He's my cat child. Or as I like to call him, my son. <laughs> uh, my son, my boy, the boy. Um. Uh, Anyway, so the, the, they were really cool about it. I felt really bad because it was inventory. And anyone who's worked in retail knows that you don't call out on inventory. And I really wouldn't have, but this was literally like the situation for me. Oh my God, did my face swell? Oh, anyway. <coughs> I ended up picking a... <laughs> bringing in a pan of brownies the next time I went in as a, an apology for being that guy. 
Uh, but, you know, the, the, the co-workers at that job were just the best. The, this isn't the same job that I called out on. That, uh, that was the clothing store that I used to work for. Um, the clothing store had really cool co-workers. Uh, everywhere else was just kind of like hit or miss. Anyway, <laughs> so I, I got to spend the next day to make sure, you know, Loki was okay. And he regained his balance very quickly. Um, the only time I really saw him out of balance is when he first got out of the carrier. And then he was probably hopped up on like eight different cat drugs and just completely out of it. Um, <laughs> that was the only time I ever really saw him off balance without his tail. He adapted to not having tail really fast and it was just kind of like one of those moments where I sat there, you know, watching him getting his bearings and just being normal. And I just kind of looked at him and I was just like, it's like you were never supposed to have a tail. It's like you were born with a tail by accident and now that it's gone, you're perfectly fine because he has never tried to attack the nub. He's been perfectly fine. But, <clears throat> uh, is, you know, uh, the, we had the weeks of recovery and stuff and then, um, I took him to that first vet that I took, that I tried to go to, to, um, you know, do the after surgery check in and, uh, get the stitches out. And, they, I was never very impressed with how they handled him and it, the fact of the matter is they didn't even take all the stitches out. You know, they said that they were dissolvable and crap and I was just like, I, I just remember specifically being like, telling them, you know, being like, hey, can I hold him? I would, I think this would go better if I held him. And they would not let me hold him because, you know, if he bit you, then, you know, that would be our problem. And I'm like, if he bit me, then it would be like every other goddamn day in my house because the cat thinks my hands are toys. But I keep looking at my box pile because that's where Loki is at this time. Um, that's why I keep looking behind me. But, um, yeah, no, I was just kind of pissed that they wouldn't let me hold my own cat during the stitches procedure. Like, I understand that, you know, they have their method and they, they didn't want me to get hurt, but it's my own damn cat. Like, if I get hurt by my own damn cat, who am I going to sue? You know, th that's just, I don't know, maybe that's just the way my brain works. Um, either way, when I got home, I ended up just kind of thinking about it and, and you know over the next few days I managed to get the stitches out myself because I know my cat I know how to do it uh, I just had a pair of um, nail clippers and I would just you know give him a pile of treats and while he's munching and scrunching I would uh, you know just very carefully take out a few stitches and then you know couple of days I had it done because I try not to you know I would do as many as I think he was willing to put up with in the moment and obviously that took a few that took a few moments but <clears throat> we got it done and you know I was always very impressed with myself for how I handled it and now I feel like um I kind of feel like there's some vets who are just like, you should have just let the vets handle it. You should have just listened to what they said. And I was, then I was like, oh, you think you know better than a vet? I don't, I don't know better than a vet, but I, I know my cat. I try to do what's best for him or handle him as best as I can. And I understand that, you know, taking your vet's advice is part of that. So I don't condone what I did. And I don't condone how I felt about it, but that's what I did. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, my, my, um, pretty much all the other time I'm going to say you should do what your vet says. You know, like your vet knows what they're about. They, 
took training for that sort of thing. I just didn't like the vets that were handling him at the time. I did not like the atmosphere of the place I went. I just, I didn't like them. I didn't trust them. I didn't trust their advice. So I didn't follow it. And that's on me. Um, in my circumstance, it worked out. However, it could have gone very badly. So I just want to put that disclaimer out there. I don't think I'm smarter than a vet. <clears throat> anyway. So, yeah. And then pretty much ever, hasn't been anything particularly remarkable since. You know, he's just been happy. His fur grew back in. <laughs> oh my god. That was just... That was a hell of a time. He had no, no fur, naked butt. It, it was really weird to see the furless butt. That That's more than the nub. The, the lack of fur was weird. And it's because, like I said, we both adapted to him having without the tail very quickly. Um, like I said, he only ever had balance issues that first night. And even then, I'm more likely to blame the drugs than the lack of tail. You know? But, yeah, we finished living in Redding, moved to where we are now, and we've pretty much been fine ever since. It's been good. I have lots of little anecdotes I could tell about him because I, I adore him. He is my boy and you know, we've lived together for a long time. He's going to be turning 10 this year in June. And he just means a lot to me, but um, I'm already, <laughs> I'm surprised myself. I'm already at half an hour and yeah, so I think I'll leave it there for now. Oh, sorry. I'll just leave the story there for now. That's pretty much the big events anyway. Everything else is just little bits and bobs that happened along the way. Which is, honestly, if you were to ask me, that is that is the true story. Is the little bits and bobs along the way. But that was kind of like the big events of the Loki saga. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, I'll just sign it off here. And um, Because Saturday didn't end up working for me, I might do vlogs Wednesdays and Fridays. Yeah, and then just have the, the Monday readings. So it'd be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, we'll see. We'll see, I might change my mind. I might decide I don't actually have that much to say. You know, not enough to cover. But given that I've already talked for half an hour about dark, about a goddamn cat, I probably have enough to say to fill up a few vlogs. I have, you know, I've got opinions. I've got a couple of lame stories. Um, and yeah, I can always talk about myself. I love talking about myself. I think I'm interesting. <laughs> but more than me, I love talking about my cat. So, yeah. Um, bye!